Microsoft calls it get and transform. The rest of the world calls it Power Query. But whatever you decide to call it, uh, the Microsoft's powerful tool for ETL uh, has been long familiar to Excel users and to users of Power BI. Now, with the introduction of SQL Server Analysis Services 2017, it becomes available to members as well. To use this tool, you must have installed the most recent version of the SQL Server data tools. You create a analysis services tabular mode project in the usual way. But after you create the project, you must make sure that the project is set to the version 14 uh, compatibility mode. Any of the earlier compatibility modes will only show you the older version of the data import tools. Now we're going to illustrate Power Query by importing some data from the World Bank. Now the World Bank tends to supply its economic data in spreadsheet format that is very good for spreadsheet users, but that's not appropriate for a Power Pivot database or for an SSAS tabular mode database. After we find the file and begin to import it, we'll be asked for security credentials. Uh, if we choose to supply a Windows account as the security credentials rather than the service account, uh, we're going to have to supply either the Active Directory domain name or the server name. Even if you're not using Active Directory, the server name seems to be required uh, when we specify the Windows account to use to open uh, this particular workbook file. Within the workbook file, the actual data of interest is appropriately enough stored in a worksheet called data. Now when we select this worksheet as our data source, we will be brought into the uh, editor for Power Query. Once we're in this editor, we'll have a fair number of jobs to do. The first job that we're going to want to do is simply set the first row into the column headings. This will make everything easier later on. Now we're going to filter so that we can obtain only the gross domestic product uh, in constant $2,010. Uh, this is speeded up a little bit. Uh, in the real world, this may take some time. This is a fairly large workbook. Now, once we have filtered on the economic indicator of interest in this particular case, uh, we actually don't need that column anymore. Uh, in fact, we don't need most of the columns in this particular workbook. So we'll just hold down the control key and keep hitting the uh, right arrow and highlight the columns that we don't want. We do, however, want the 2015 figures. So we'll hold down the control key and identify that column. The remainder can simply be deleted. Now, if this were the only data we wanted, we'd be done. But looking towards the future, we'd like to turn this into the beginning of a useful table that can hold data for many years. We want to change the column name, therefore, to GDP. And we're going to need a new column, one that actually contains the value for the year. In this particular uh, table, the way we have it so far, it'll always be 2015. But as we extend this table later on, we'll have different rows with different year numbers and different data, of course. Okay, well, after the new column is created, we'll straighten up a little bit by changing the sequence of the columns. I like to have the fact columns uh, towards the right. 
uh, and we're ready to go ahead and click the uh, import button. We'll give the query a good name, click the import button, and then we'll go get a cup of coffee while the data processes and loads. Once the data is finished loading, we'll be all set with a SSAS tabular mode table uh, containing the World Bank data. I'd like to thank you for joining us today and be sure to go to www.learningtree.com uh, check out our offerings in business intelligence course materials. You might also want to go to blog.learningtree.com and see some of the comments uh, and observations of Learning Tree instructors. Take care now.